December 29th, 3.03 p.m. Right in Cola offices. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Attorney. Or, yeah, Phoenix Wright Attorney, Justice for All. Uh, in the last episode, we finished up day one of the trial. We've pretty much proved that you know nothing, Jon Snow. Literally, it was snowing. And we have to figure out who the fuck did it. Like, did he fly away? Whoever did it? I mean, what? I mean, confusing, right? Fucking clowns. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Nick? What is it? I've got a confession to make. I'm terrible at figuring out magic tricks. Magic tricks? Yep, magic tricks are by... are their, by their very definition tricks, right? But I can never figure out the tricks when I see them. I'm just not good at it. That's because the tricks are performed by pros. They do it so you can't guess the trick. But, but, the trick Pearly showed me was incredible! Pearls did a magic trick? Huh, what kind of trick was it? Let's see, it looked like she pulled the end of her own thumb off. Heh. <laughs> First she put her thumb right next to her... <laughs> oh god. Put her right thumb next to her left hand and then it just separated. She could move it up and down and everything! It was incredible! <laughs> really? Was it kind of like this? What? How? What? Who? How? When? Where? Nick, you're like a real magician! See, this is why I just can't figure out magic. I'm no good at it. Especially hard tricks like flying away from the scene of a murder. You'll take it all you'll take all the fun out of magic if you keep trying to figure it out. For real though, that is the 100% truth about magic. If you try to figure out how the trick is done, then the magic is gone and how boring is that? Only the magicians get to be that boring. Anyway, so what are we doing today? I don't see any way out of this. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. There's no way we can solve the mystery of a criminal flying by tomorrow. I was thinking, do you really think the criminal flew through the air? The only one who thinks that is Mo, right? He says that he saw it. That's true. Mo looked awfully serious when he said that. Do you think he might be trying to frame Max? If that was it, he would have simply said, I saw Max. That would have been enough. There's no reason why anyone would believe he flew. But what if the criminal really did fly? There's only one person who could do that. Max. You're really not helping my confidence here, Maya. Could be... It could, ah. Max told you how he does his magic trick. He fucking ropes and swings and strings. Anyone can be tied to some ropes and swings and strings. Maybe somebody else who wanted to fucking frame Max. What are you gonna... I mean, come on now. Seriously? You can't even come up with that obvious of an idea? You got any other ideas? How about that? Everyone seems to hate Max. Ben, Trilo, Mo. They all have nothing nice to say. Well, just so you know, Ben Trilo is the same person. That magician does seem rather full of himself, doesn't he? Especially when he says things like customers only go to the circus to see him. He even hit Ben over the head with a bottle. But... But what? But that doesn't seem enough to frame another person for murder. And it was proven that neither Ben nor Mo lied on the stand. Maybe Ben saw the ringmaster wearing Max's costume. But Mo clearly said that he saw Max himself. Huh. Alright, well... That... None of those parts of that conversation seem very helpful. Let's start by going to the detention center and see if we can get a get a glimpse at Max real quick. Max in his maximum cell prison, if you know what I'm saying. Oh god. Oh my sweeties! You mind hurrying up and getting me out of this place? We're doing our best, Max. Just hang in there. A little while ago, some people from a local TV station came by. They said that since I'm a fame magician, let's make your very own TV special. Really? What kind of TV special? Maximilian Galactica, the great prison escape. It would be aired live. Hey, that sounds like it would be an awesome special. But if I do the special before I'm acquitted, they'll never let me out of here for real. Well, it would surely be an unnecessary addition to your troubles with the law. That's what I was thinking, but the production staff is already working on the show. If you don't get me out quick, I'll have no choice but to stage a real prison break. You seem awfully calm about that possibility. I'd have no choice. It would be a contractual obligation. That's show business, even if it means breaking the law forever. Anyway, you got any extra details that we haven't already heard? Uh, the night of the crime. You didn't happen to fly off into the sky, did you? Here is how everything went down, sweetie. At the time of the murder, I was sitting in the ringmaster's room. Not to mention, flying off into the sky is not just something I can do at will. 
I don't care what the Stoogie Clown says, it was to me. Max, Max, do you mind teaching me the trick behind flying? Hmm, you'll have to forgive me, sweetie. The difference between me and cheap imitation magicians is that I keep my mouth shut. I don't teach people tricks, but I will say this much. It's much harder than you think. Okay, then. What do you think about today? I was thinking about this in court today. I've got a favor to ask you. Anything for you, my sweetie. Be friends with the other performers in the circus, you bitch! Fabulous! A great joke! Why would I be friends with a bunch of hacks like that? But... I've won on the world stage! I won the International Grand Prix! The International Grand Prix? Performers should always look to perform on the world stage. But the performers at this circus are completely and utterly devoid of ambition. That is something that I can simply not tolerate. Ambition, huh? Something about what Max just said rings true to my ears. So let's hear about how you became the Grand Prick. Oh my, my sweeties want to hear all about the Grand Prick, don't they? To be, to be honest though, I've told this story like 100 times already, so it's a bit boring. We're sorry to make you tell it again. You must not have heard me. I am really sick of telling this story. But what can you do? I'm Maximilian Galactica. I suppose I can tell it again. Voila! Here, take a look at this. I just happen to have a picture from the Grand Prix with me. Oh yeah, just carry it around. Oh yay. Just look at that fabulous stage. That is the first stage that I ever flew on. I flew right over the audience. The crowd erupted into applause. At that time, I thought to myself that I could die right then and die a happy man. I'll never forget how I felt that night, the emotions, the acclaim. Wow. Ahem, <clears throat> by the way, I think everyone who is a performer should get to the experience that I f that get to experience that feeling. I just wish I could explain that to the other people in the circus. That's incredible, Max. I want a trophy too. Hey Nick, how about you buy a trophy for me? <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works. Just buy somebody a trophy. That's not how you earn a trophy, Maya. My sweeties, you can have this picture of my triumph. Just make sure you show it to all the other members of the circus. Watch and learn. That's what you should tell them. Learn how to get thrown in jail? More like, incite them to be angry at you because you're a goddamn braggart. Anyway, um... I suppose we don't have anything new to present to him either, so let's just move on. Let's just go around until we have dead ends. There's no reason to exhaust every option until you run into a dead end. So we're going to the circus, baby. Back to the Big Berry Circus during the day. Did we see it during the day last time, too? I guess it was, huh? You hear that? It sounds like two people arguing. All right, let's do it. You ready? Y yes. Uh, wait, wait. Quit your whining. Let's just give this a shot already, eh? All right, let's go. Your boat. Row, row, row your boat. What are you doing, eh? Gently down the stream, fool. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trilo, this just isn't going to work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're going to have to be. To, you're going to have to be on your own someday. If you can't handle something as simple as this, what are you going to do then? Eh? Hello, Ben. Hello to you too, Trilo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're on a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. Secret crash training? Whoa. <laughs> yes, Trilo Tr wouldn't give up until till we tried his idea for a new routine. So, we were trying to sing and, and round for our new ventriloquism act. In a round? You can do that? That's incredible. See, see? Even they are surprised by the idea. I told you, I told you. They're not the only ones. You surprised me with your idea. Once we've got a grip on the basics, then it's just a matter of practice. You, 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 you think so? Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to give this back to you. Ah, there it is. Now that I've got this ring back, it's time to take one more shot at Regina. Um, yeah, okay, take the shot at Regina. Is Regina, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway... About that trial today. Um, I know that you already testified in court today. You want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. 
Just looking at his walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. But then we said hello and didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draped in those gaudy symbols. What would... What would you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? Hmm, what do you think, Ben? Well, uh, um, I, I, I would have thought it, w it was the ringmaster. Hmm, hmm, something just isn't adding up here. I wonder who they really saw. Hey, you got any other ideas, bitches? I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm waiting for her even now. Okay, really? That's so sweet. But if you really wanted to see Regina, shouldn't you just check out the tent? Ha! You haven't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Huh? Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? If you had a clue, you would know that waiting is such a sweet, wonderful torture. When your body aches for your partner's love, that's one of the best parts! Um, yeah, yeah I, I knew that, I totally... Poor Maya, she's so red, she even looks like a vine ripe to she looks like a vine ripe tomato. Okay. Okay, then how about your ventriloquism? Your ventriloquism. So, how is this uh, new routine working out? Will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routines are secret, eh? We're gonna take the ventriloquism world by storm. It'll be a real revolution. Jeff Dunn won't know what hit him. <laughs> that sounds incredible. But let me make one thing clear. We're not going to take on the world just because that jerk said we should. That jerk? Max Galactica. Performer should aim for the world. Who does he think he is? Trilo, you seem really fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can conquer the world stage. You're right, you're right. Mark my words, I, Trilo Quish, will win the Grand Prix. You're the man now, doll. Okay. Row, row, row your boat will be the key to a glorious victory. Um, not to rain on your parade, but wouldn't a more mature song be best? Hey, you've got to start somewhere, right? True. Don't screw this up. You've got to be a part of this, too. All right, so the only thing I really want to present to this guy right now is the picture that Max gave us, which is this, right? Let's go ahead and present this to him and see if it does anything. Would you mind taking a look at this? It's uh, uh, okay. Apparently he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, never mind. He doesn't give a shit about that one. Sorry, sir. Didn't mean to show you something that would make you stutter more than usual. All right. So should we start by going to the big top? Yeah, let's start with the big top. See if we can see what's her face. God, I got to do Valley Girl accent today, too. Damn, I'm going to have to do everybody's voice today. Shit. Huh? Where's Regina? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Nick, you're kind of chicken, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm just, uh, allergic to wild tigers. That's it. Totally. Believable. Believable. All right, let's start with the ringmaster's room, then we'll check out the cafeteria next. Yeah, yeah, December, blah, blah, blah. What's going on in here? Max and the ringmaster had their talk in this room. That could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. Why'd he do that? Maybe it was cold or something. Maybe. Um... Can we still not get whatever this piece of paper is hanging out of the suit? You may not know this, but they call this a tail coat, blah, blah. Can we skip this? We read this a million times before. A scrap of white paper is sticking out of the coat. Huh? Where? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging through people's coats. Why does it still tell me that the white piece of paper and it won't let me look at it? It's stupid. Whatever. There's not going to be anything new clues unless something changes, so I'm not even going to bother examining everything in an area unless something's different. Cafeteria. They still haven't cleaned this place up yet. If Pearlie got one look at the state of this place, she'd slap whoever was in charge across the face. Remind me to never invite her to my office. Cause she'll slap the fuck out of me and you. Because you're supposed to be cleaning that shit up, Maya. What the hell do I have you around for if you're not cleaning up my damn office? You know what I'm saying? Sexist. Don't care. True. What the hell else does she do around the damn office on a normal day? Apparently, she gets all our clients for us, so I shouldn't hate that hard. Alright, anybody hanging around outside here? Come on, can we find somebody? Just don't be the clown. Oh, it's Gumshoe. Cool. Oh, it's you two. 
You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? Nah. I'm taking a rest right now, pal. I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Ms. Von Karma told me to come down here and do this for her. Oh, yeah, that's right. His punishment. Being bossed around by a woman. I know how you feel, bro. Let me tell you something, pal. Listen to that old clown sucks all your energy. Every time he's done talking, he looks at you like you should be doing something. Um, I think he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you fake laugh? <laughs> if you fake laugh that much? If you fake laughing? Come on. Come on, translators. Francisca really set you up bad this time, didn't she? If you ask me, she should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not going to get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor Von Karma's always got her eyes on us. And every time you definitely don't want her to show up, poof, there she is. Don't show up. 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 Looks like she's wound him pretty tight. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How's that possible? According to the clown, the criminal jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. If that's what happened, it means the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Who lives in that room, behind the window up there? The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor, it seems. Pretty soon, Ms. Von Karma's gonna start her investigation up there. So don't get any ideas of going up to the acrobat's room. Got it, pal? Bitch, I might need to go up there for my own investigation. Ugh, <sighs> Von Karma. When she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out myself. And I was thinking the same goddamn thing. Apparently we can't go talk to Gumshoe no more. So the only thing we have left is to talk to Mo. If he's here. He's probably here. Mo's not here. Where the fuck is he at then? If he was here, he would have been able to tell even before you stepped into his room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. Ha 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 ha. What do you think he's laughing at when he's all by himself? I always thought he was just thinking up new jokes. Hmm. He must really love his work. Alright, so I don't think there's anything new I see here either. So, where are we going right now, bros? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we obviously have been here. Let's check everywhere again. Now that we've uncovered one new thing, it's always good to go back and check everywhere else again. Ringmaster room? Nope. Okay. The cafeteria? Okay, here we go. Now we gotta come over here. There he is! <laughs> Alright! Alright, welcome to the wonderful world of, of Fabulous, the cafeteria! <laughs> Yikes. He's in an awfully good mood. <laughs> Alright, you know what time it is? A riddle time! Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? Um, 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 um. Come on, you can answer this. It's easy. Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is possibly a weapon of bowel destruction. Psst. Wrong again. Or wrong. Try again. Okay. What do you think, girly? Um, I, I got it. Okay. What is your answer? Because they are in the cafeteria eye. Uh, exactly! It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe! <laughs> I did it! What's going on? He's being too nice. I mean, he was always nice, he just wouldn't shut the fuck up with his puns, that's all. Today's been a really crazy day, hasn't it? You're telling me? I didn't think it was gonna be so tough. Tough? Yeah, it was a tough crowd. That's what you call a crowd that refuses to laugh. For instance, if it was such a tough crowd last night, I had to smash watermelons. Oh, it was it? Huh? I told them all a great story and even greater jokes, but no one busted out laughing. You even used the famed no shoes, no shirt, no service joke, show bit? That's a stupid joke. Exactly. How can you not laugh at stunning comedy like that? Because you're fucking lame. Are you 100% sure about your testimony today? I saw what I saw, I swear that creep just... Flew through the air? It wasn't exactly flying per se, it was more like floating. The silhouette of his face made me positive it was Max. 
I don't see a Cyclock. He must be telling the truth. It's true, we haven't had a Cyclock yet. At least not since we've busted Max in the beginning. We're probably going to get one. I wonder if it's going to be this Acrobat. See, remember when I said Acro was a new person we're going to meet? And as soon as I said Acrobat... So we're going to probably meet a new person today is what I'm getting at. And he's probably going to be the Acrobat. And how fitting that his name is Acro. My god. Could it be any more lame? <sighs> Phoenix Wright, Capcom. I thought you were better than that. Apparently not. Why would I think you're better than that? Of course you're not. Anyway, Grand Prix photo. What do you think? Huh! <laughs> Stop this picture. Be sure you give you guys too. Sorry, I'm yawning now. Huh? You've seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica. He really gets around. <laughs> Means a whore? <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't just show me the picture. What else did he show you? His hoary ways? He showed me his bust, too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. His bust? You mean like his boobs? He's got giant breasticles? Oh. It's in the picture, I think. He'd make us worship it every day. He made us bow to his greatness. He's got a big bust? I wouldn't mind hearing more about Max's bust. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. Okay. Well, I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad Max told me to show it to everybody because I probably would have done it anyways, but whatever. Max's bust should be over there on that small table. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh yeah! <laughs> when was it? I'd say about five days ago. All of a sudden, the bus disappeared. It disappeared? If you want to see it, there's a photo on the bulletin board over there. Oh. Okay. Max just had to put the picture up. Hmm. Hey, this thing is really cool. Nick, Nick, I want someone to make a bust of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. Aww. All right, so we got a picture of a bust. Is there anything else that's changed about this place? Nope, there's nothing's changed that I can see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about this or if he's setting up a bad joke. And nope, nope, I'm drawing a blank here. Quiet Mo is a good Mo in my book. I guess there really aren't any other things around that have changed, huh? Well, there is this one teensy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us, tell us! Oh God, what changed? Well, on the morning of the crime, over on that bulletin board, this piece of paper was posted front and center. Piece of paper? It's torn, so I don't know what it said, but I could see its title. Yikes! It says, to the murderer, what? M -m 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 murderer <laughs> Yup, that's what it says, but the rest of it has been ripped off. And I don't know who posted it. Um... When did you find this? The morning before the murder. Before the murder? Yes, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. Who in the world posted this thing? All right, so now we got a note to show to people too. Nick, I think this is a very important clue. I think so too. Thank you. We should probably show it to Max actually, now that I think about it. Anybody else? Anybody else hanging around? Downtown by themselves. <laughs> I don't see that fucking bust. Where's the bust? Where is that bitch ass bust? Where's the bust? Alright, let's present this fool with the new things that we got and see if it helps. Max G bust. And no. Okay. What about the note? Alright. Ben is not helpful. The end. Next. Alright, let's just go straight to Max now before we get into the other areas and present him with the bust and see what he says about the bust and we'll present him with a piece of paper as well. What about this? Fabulous, you'd like me to sign this for you. Uh, oh, okay. What about the note? Do you know anything about this note? The morning of the murder, it was posted on the wall in the cafeteria. I do know all about the note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. Oh, yeah? Your heart skipped a beat? While I was enjoying my morning tea, the ringmaster and company entered the room. And company? I guess it wasn't really a company. It was just the ringmaster and my sweetie pie. 
When the ringmaster read the note, he turned an incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into the tail. Oh, that's what the piece of paper in his pocket is. Really? Out of curiosity, what in the world was written on that thing? Let's see. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't want to steal the fun from my sweeties. Go and find out on your own. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. You might also want to ask my sweetie pie princess. Okay. Regina. And we're going to go find the note from the coat jacket. Because we already knows where it is. So now we know where to go. Let me guess. Regina's going to be in this room. Oh, maybe not. Well, at the very least, maybe we can actually get the other half of this note first. Hey, do you see that? There's a scrap of paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, got a feeling I know what that is. I bet that's the other half of the note that Mo gave us. Then let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. Here we go. I knew it! It fits perfectly with the other piece. What does it say? What does it say? To the murderer, I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet at 10 p.m. tonight at the Lodging House Plaza. Oh, this is me talking, whatever. Huh. Tonight at 10 p.m. That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called out the ringmaster. Huh. Weird. So, something tells me the ringmaster... Oh, man, I can already see what's going to happen. Let's wait till we meet this new character who we're clearly going to meet. I can already kind of piece this whole thing together in my head, and it's pretty sad how easy it is. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's actually go and see if we can find Regina somewhere around here. Regina, Regina, where you at, Bobina? Oh, never mind. Here's Gumshoe. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure you did a good job as usual. Well, I am done with the investigation of the acrobat. Finally. But with Ms. Von Karma... Uh-oh. Phone call, phone call. Phone call, phone call. Nick, what is that? That beeping sound. Huh? It's Ms. Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she's usually not very far behind. I mean, there's like an like you got like a, an alert of a, a Von Karma. You got a Von Karma alarm. Von Karma alarm, as it would be going. <laughs> a Von Karma alarm. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, some sort of pager or something? If you don't mind, pal, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Quick. See ya, pal. Oh, God. I didn't know that Gumshoe could run that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so afraid of a girl. Still in her teens. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. Uh-oh. Oh, that's why. Because she's on her way here. That whip could cut right through me. There she is. Ms. Von Karma. That bitch. Von, Von, Von Karma! She really did appear. It was a battle today in court, wasn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? What can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day. The day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands making the national news? <laughs> national news? You possess a small, sus such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You miserable plight will, your miserable plight will be known internationally. I think she might be overestimating the importance of a win by just a smidge. Seriously, though. Anyway, you got anything you want to tell us, Von Karma? It appears you got your hands onto something. Ha! Huh, I'm amazed you picked up on that much. Anyone could. You couldn't hide that look of victory with ten papers of bag, ten paper bags on your head. Ten papers of bags. Did I really just say that? I've got conclusive evidence and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness. You must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in the summons for him to be called as a witness as we speak. It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it already. You want to beat me and destroy me and whatever can't worry about her. I've got to try and find out more information for myself. For real, though. Why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? It doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. Ooh, she went there, bitch. My dad? You must mean the esteemed man from Von Kong. Of course! Your dad! I know you miss him. 
Enough out of you. One more word and you'll get a mouthful of whip. Now, when did I ever bring up my papa's name in this, or any other conversation? True. Then, then what's this revenge thing you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I have to see him again, one more time. Him? I'm sure you know to whom I prefer. Miles Edgeworth! What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? m m m m miles m m m miles Edgeworth! <laughs> what? She was in love with him. Bet. 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 Miles Edgeworth? Why would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? Or you haven't forgotten, have you? Do you know who it was that trained the gifted pr prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? Uh, Manfred von Karma? Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that Edgeworth was right again. Miles was like a little brother to me. Little brother? Isn't he older than you? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> um, aren't Edgeworth and Nick the same age? Seriously, though, what the fuck? Edgeworth. The man who inspired me to become an attorney. I fought against him in a few cases. Just a few. But after that case was over, he vanished. It's your fault he is gone. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I... Nick, what does she mean? I... Uh, Edgeworth's death! His death! After that case, Edgeworth was in a peculiar state, and he got worse every day. He never set foot in a court again. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. That was one year ago. It was right after you left to go back home. Mr. Edgeworth, he's dead? I don't believe it. He's still alive, I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death? Of course he did. You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You effectively killed the prosecutor in him. Just like your victory muddled, muddied the honorable va name Von Karma. I'm going to find him. Then I'm going to teach him the difference between right and wrong with my own hands. N Nick, um, about Edgeworth. Uh, Maya, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again, okay? Nick? Von Karma? What? I don't know if you are God's gift to prosecutors or not, but I've had my enough of your bitch ass and him too. Wh what happened? Hmph. This dog is all bark and no bite. He's already been defeated. Regardless, I have nothing to inform you two of today. Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. I don't think so. I don't believe it. Nick? Let's go. We need to talk with the performer on the third floor. Sorry I brought it up, Nick. You better be, bitch. All right, Acro. This is Acro, huh? The Native American with birds. <sighs> Here we go. Oh, wait, he's in a wheelchair. Or at least it looks like he's in a wheelchair. Does it not? Huh. Interesting. Maybe he's just sitting in a chair? I don't even know what the fuck to to do for his voice. He's definitely dressed Native American style with that face paint and the way his hair's done up. You, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> yes? Pleased to meet you. I'm Ken Dingling. Ken Dingling. Ken Dingling. Like kindling? I'm confused. Is that your real name? Oh, okay, I see. But here at the circus, everyone just calls me Acro. What am I going to do with this guy's voice? Um, he seems like a younger, pleasant man. Based on his face. Who knows how his face will explode once we interrogate him, but, uh... Huh. What kind of voice do I give this guy? Just keep it deep. Here at the circus, everyone just calls me Acro. 
Mr. Acro? Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you'd definitely show up here. Acro? You're a member of the circus as well? That's right. I mainly perform on the tightrope or the flying trapeze. But nowadays, all I perform is in, in, is in my wheelchair. Exactly. I knew he was in a wheelchair. It looked like he was. Okay. Tell us all about the circus. Acro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at business. Then one night, they decided to run away from it all without me. Uh-huh, you look kind of okay with that. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me. He was truly a lifesaver. It seems like the ringmaster... Oh, sorry, wrong voice. It seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. He was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. And now, look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes, I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. Huh. I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina is so cute, she's truly a princess. Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Um... Hmm. Do I detect the hint of a grudge against Regina? Possibly. Tell me about why you're crippled, sir. Um, I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk now? I can't even stand now. And since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. That's awful. The accident happened during an acrobat session, right? Or acrobatics, whatever. Um... Oh, shit. There it is. I knew the new person was going to be our locks. We got three locks. All right. Ah, shit. A psych lock? Doesn't seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. Oh, shit. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's almost been six months since I was hurt. I injured my legs during practice. Six months ago? What in the world went on in this, at this circus, then? I don't know. Will you tell us anything? I stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Oh, you went there for rehabilitation. What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. Oh god, what did you see? What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. What did you see? What did you see, Acro? That night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see. The scene of the crime was right below your window. That's when I looked out the window. What did you see? He was flying straight up into the air. He? He? Maximilian Galactica. What? That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I am absolutely sure. There is no doubt in my mind. N Nick. Yeah, not good for us. 